In the 1970s, the IRA used condoms as part of the internal mechanisms of their bombs, and some IRA members were opposed to using condoms on moral grounds. Today in Belfast, the health minister is a young earth creationist who rejects evolution, and the High Court has just told him that he is being irrational to ban gay men from giving blood. Today in Rome, the Vatican still protects priests who have raped children, and Irish state tribunals have found that Catholic bishops have positively lied and deliberately misled. Today in Pakistan, Asiya Bibi, a Christian mother, is facing execution by hanging for allegedly blaspheming against Muhammad. And two politicians who have defended her have been murdered, one murdered by his own bodyguard. Today in Wisconsin, two parents have been jailed for reckless homicide because they prayed over their dying child instead of calling an ambulance. Recently on the BBC, Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor said that atheists are not fully human. Religion corrupts our sense of reality and it corrupts our sense of morality. And these two corruptions combine to harm society and to cause terrible suffering. Firstly, religion harms and corrupts our sense of reality. It encourages us to believe implausible and untestable assertions based on faith. And by faith, I mean believing something because you want to believe it disproportionately to the currently best available evidence. But before I get into that, I have some good news for all of you here today. I was talking to Bill Gates of Microsoft earlier today, and he's going to give everybody here $10 million if you vote with me on this motion. <laughs> Now, clearly, you realise that's an absurd statement. But if I had said to you instead that today I was talking to the creator of the universe, and he told me that he would give each of you an eternity in paradise if you do what I say, then some of you might believe me. Certainly, many people around the world would believe me. And that is because religion corrupts our sense of reality. Because normally, when we assess whether or not we believe claims, what we do is we assess them against the evidence. And as the claims become increasingly implausible, we proportionately raise the bar of the evidence that we require to believe it. But with religion, we do the exact opposite. As the claims become increasingly improbable, we lower the bar of evidence that we require to believe it. And we do that because religion encourages us to believe not merely implausible claims, but literally untestable claims. And then it encourages us to live our lives on the basis of these untestable claims. And when you compare that to harmful secular ideologies, which can also fall prey to faith and dogma, such as fascism or communism or the unregulated free market, what you notice is that those faiths and dogmas eventually bump into reality and we notice that they're not working. But religion hides its testability in an imaginary afterlife. The second way that religion harms society is that it corrupts our sense of morality. Morality is a natural function of our brains. It has evolved in the brains of social animals, including humans, because cooperation and competition are both helpful to survival. And in recent generations, we humans have refined our sense of morality. We increasingly respect individual conscience and personal rights and the rights of non-human animals. And in doing that, look, it's a hard enough job already. It's hard enough to balance the competing requirements of compassion and empathy and cooperation and reciprocity and suffering and well-being and fairness and justice. But what religion does is it corrupts that task. It adds into an already difficult task a corrupting factor of invented supernatural commands that are unrelated to compassion or justice or fairness or empathy or reciprocity. And religion insists that our natural morality is trumped by this, that it's trumped by what some people believe that the creator of the universe is telling them to impose on the rest of us. And so many Catholics will justify denying condoms to AIDS victims in Africa. And many Muslims will justify the claim in the Quran that husbands can beat their wives. And last year, when in Ireland, a hospital refused an abortion to Savita Halapanavar, whose fetus already had no chance of survival and who also died herself after being refused the abortion, her husband was told in the hospital that this was because Ireland is a Catholic country. 
Not only is religion not needed for morality, but religion actively corrupts morality. Finally, I want to ask you to please keep your focus on the motion tonight. Don't be distracted by claims that religion also does good. That's true. And it is also true that religion harms society. Don't be distracted by claims that secular ideologies can cause harm. That's true. And it is also true that religion harms society. What you are being asked today is whether religion harms society, not whether religion also does good and not whether other things also do bad. However implausible the claim that I made earlier may be about talking to Bill Gates, it is surely infinitely more implausible to suggest that a supreme being created a universe of a thousand billion galaxies, each of which contains a thousand billion stars like our sun, in order that it might speak to <coughs> one member of one species on one planet and tell him to stone a man to death for gathering sticks on the Sabbath and then impregnate a virgin in order to give birth to himself and then give Muhammad a ride on a flying horse and then appear in Joseph Smith's hat in order to attire him in magic underpants. <laughs> and on the basis of untestable and absurd claims like this, Asiya Bibi is today languishing in a prison cell in Pakistan awaiting execution by hanging for allegedly blaspheming Muhammad. Religion corrupts our sense of reality, it corrupts our sense of morality, and those corruptions combine to harm society and cause terrible suffering. I propose the motion.